She says, all is well, and they're giving, they're giving her medicine and running tests. But she's at home today because of the medicine they're giving her. And she said she got a little bit of a stubborn spirit about not wanting to take the medicine. And so she listened, she put the tape in. Brother Brandon preached why. And at the end, somewhere in the tape, he said, some, some people get such a stubborn attitude when the doctor gives them medicine, they don't want to take it. Yeah. So she said, I'm taking the medicine now, but I don't want to. Um, but anyway, she, she says all is well, but she just needs prayer for her faith and sanctification for the medicine and all is well. And found out what it was? Or no, not yet. They're still looking for the reason. Oh, man. All right. All right. Last time we uh, we continued on looking through Genesis, Genesis chapter four, <coughs> and I think we made it to we were on verse five. Genesis chapter four. Let's go ahead and read through those verses. I'm I'm probably only going to get to maybe verse 10 today. So let's go ahead and read through those just to, to pick up where we were. <coughs> and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again buried his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep, but Cain was the tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So, last time we were talking about how um, Abel brought his sacrifice by faith, and God vindicated his sacrifice, that it was true. That his message that you must bring a sacrifice was true. And then we, we started talking about how God vindicated the prophet's message. And how he vindicated a believer. And um, we were looking at uh, just kind of taking the story of how Rahab saw the children of Israel coming out of the wilderness. And she saw the pillar of fire coming first. And how the pillar of fire leads the believer. And it vindicated the prophet by, you know, it, it was uh, a photograph was taken of the pillar of fire. And then the next thing we were going to look at was the Ark of the Covenant. Which is the Word. The, the Spirit leading the Word. And the Spirit and the Word uh Leading a believer. So let's um, let me get my quotes. Now the way uh, there's there's lots of ways that you could say how Brother Brandon was vindicated about the all the all the different the many wonderful amazing things, but um, it, you know Christ was revealed in simplicity, and what a lot of people overlook is that uh, a true prophet and a true believer are both vindicated because they. Stay with the word. And, uh, you know, when Joshua told the children of Israel when they were crossing the River Jordan to stay close to the ark because you haven't known this way before. So, um, you know, we're, we're crossing uh, the River Jordan, the rapture too. And uh, it's, it's crucial to stay close to the word because we haven't gone this way before. Uh, so let me just read some quotes from Brother Ram said, The signs of his coming, he said, But the true prophet, how you'll mark him, he will stay with the word always. In the present stage of my ministry, he said, He was talking about Paul, now everything forsaken him, Paul. But it was at this time that God stepped in on the scene because any man that knows the word will stay with the word, knowing that the word is God. And God's power to transform, he said, True predestinated believers will stay with the word because they are part of that word. And one as he said. That's when he said in his church. That's what he said he would do. He believes the word, not the creed, not the dogma, but the word. And by doing this, he shows himself in them by confirming his word, making the same life that he lived once live over again bring his word to pass and I just I was thinking about you know how God uh, through brother Branham he revealed to us the mysteries that are in the Bible 
so that they could be revealed in us. Oh, yeah. uh, he had, he was the prophet was identified in the scripture, and we are identified in the scripture because what's written in the scripture has to come to pass in our lives. What's predicted in the scripture about him? He the scripture predicted that there would a prophet that a prophet would come on the scene. In Malachi 4 and Revelation 10, 7, all the many scriptures we know, but also predicted that there would be a people that would believe it. And I, I, I was reading a scripture where he said the same pillar of fire, the same God that led, you, led me here to preach to you tonight is the same God that led you here to hear me. Um, so we're, we're identified with the message. Five definite identifications of the true church of the living God. He said somebody had seen him. Somebody was trying to tell him about it, and they did not believe it. If that isn't the same thing today, we know he lives. We have the witness of his spirit in us. We see his power move over the audiences. And tens of thousands of people discern their thoughts, thoughts and hearts, just exactly like he did when he was here. Like the Bible said, the word of God. If he is the word of God, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the word of God is sharper and more powerful than a two-edged sword cutting even to the marrow of the bone and the discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Christ, the works that I do shall you also see him doing that. How many have seen him do it? Sure we know he does it. He lives here. He's in our hearts. You know, uh, I, I believe a, a, a real true believer, when they, when they hear something, if, if maybe you don't understand it, you'll always take it back to the Word. That's what Brother Brown said when the angel came and, when the angel came and told him something. He didn't just say, okay, that's the truth. He took it back and proved it by the word. Right. And that's, that's the a vindication of a true believer. It's not just saying, yeah, that's, that's the truth, but let me go prove it. <laughs> Why well, I'm against organized religion. He said, now look, this message of the day just can't be something saying, we got the truth and we got this, that. It has to be foretold in his word. And then after the word is brought forth, it has to be properly vindicated by the word. Why I'm against organized, organized religion. Now if you go to the Seventh Day Adventist say, we got her, just keep the Sabbath. You show me that in the scriptures. Miss Eddie Baker said she had it, show it to me. Jehovah Witness said they had it, show it to me. See, Methodists say they got it, show it to me. Baptists say they got it, show it to me. Show me any organizations. I'm proving to you that they are every one out of the will of God, every one of them contrary, teaching traditions of man instead of the word of God. I don't know a one of them that would accept the things that's really written in the Bible the way it is. That's right. But when somebody comes by and said, I got the message of the day, he must properly be seen first and foretold to come. When John the Baptist walked out of there, they said, are you the Christ? He said, I'm not. He said, are you the Elijah? He said, I'm not. He said, who are you? He could identify himself. He had the message of the hour. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The word identifies the prophet, the messenger, and it identifies the believer. Perseverant, he said, why? It was the word that was in them, God's word for that day. See, that's how they were vindicated. That was their credentials. None of them belonged to an organization. Not one never did. Their credentials were their ministry. A prisoner, he said, people say it was a mental telepathy. Who would refuse such to come into their church? And they wouldn't permit you to per mention one word of serpent seed, eternal security, and the things that the Holy Spirit has revealed and proved to be the word. I mean, challenge after challenge to come and prove this to be wrong. Now, um, this uh, this next quote from Thirst. I'm trying to move a little bit fast. Time, okay. <clears throat> you know, uh, <clears throat> I'm about to share something a little personal with you. I, this is kind of scary sometimes, but I, a while, a few years ago, the Lord gave me a dream where I was t talking to somebody about the the Word, and in the dream, I saw. Uh, um, they were telling me something wrong. And I saw a drum in my heart, and uh, out of the side, an arm came with a hammer, and every time they would speak, that arm would swing and hit that drum, and it would go bloop, bloop, like it wasn't sounding 
it was it was wrong. And in my dream, I said, "That's not right," because it doesn't work. Bear record. <coughs> What's in my heart? <laughs> and I always wondered if that dream was true. Until I read this, I heard Brother Brown say this quote from Thirst. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then I thought comparing the deer with a man that's thirsting for God before the enemy gets there. There's something about a child of God that when you once are born into the Spirit of God, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is something about the person that can sense the enemy. You can take a man when he's taking the Scripture and reading the Scripture and try to inject something to that Scripture that's, that's contrary to the Scripture. A man that's filled with the Holy Ghost can sense that right quick. There's something out of the way. When he gets into a place and that little certain sense in there that it's done to protect your life. You mustn't, you mustn't never go for anything unless it's exactly the Word of God. Amen. You must stay right exactly with that Word. And now, and we are secured with that sense as long as we are in the Holy Spirit. Now then, you find a person get up there and say, now that was for the apostolic age. That Now right quick, if you have received the Holy Spirit, you've been endowed with that sense. It sets it off, there's something wrong there. See, they try to explain it away that it's for another day that really you don't need those things today. But Jesus said, these things shall follow them that believe. See, there's a little something that sits off in you, a little buzzer in knowing that that's wrong and that's the way of death. Because Jesus said, if we add one word to this or take one word from it, our part is taken out of the book of life. See, not one scripture. We must take it just the way it's written. And God watches over his word to perform it, and we know that it's got to be just right. So therefore, no matter what a church would say, what anyone else would say, if you're born of the Spirit of God, you become part of the Bible. God told Ezekiel, he the prophet, he said, take the scroll and eat it. Then the prophet and the scroll became part of each other, and that's the believer when he receives the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, and the Spirit of God is the Word of God. My words are spirit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when you are a part of that Word, oh, then let something come up contrary to that Word. There is a little buzzer that sets off right quick. See, it's to warn you that death is in the road. We should never do that. There is also these that thirst are just natural. They are natural for the Christian. They are natural for the human being. So God gives us a little something to... Tell us when something is wrong. And then when you hear something wrong, you go back to the Word and prove it. Because that's the vindication of a true believer. He's going to take it back to the Word and prove it. Just like Brother Branham, every time that angel would come, he'd go back to the Word and prove it. Now the next thing, imagine Rahab looking out her window. She's seeing the children of Israel coming out of the wilderness. The pillar of fire is leading them. The Ark of the Covenant is with them. All the children of Israel are gathered around the Ark, guarding it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all around it, coming out. And then behind them comes the signs and wonders. And they had, they had an atonement, a rock that was cleft. They had the brazen serpent that was a type of sin already judged. And you know all the people think signs and wonders a lot of times are kind of like a magic trick, but God gives us things when we need them. Their clothes never rotted off because they needed their clothes. Mm -hmm. He gave them water out of that rock because they needed it. The things that they had need of, he provided. The faith that was once delivered to the saints. His vindication was there. His power was there. There was a smitten rock, a brass serpent, an atonement going before them with a sign of God over them with signs and wonders. The same thing from Cain and Abel. Now, not fundamental, fundamental to you, but signs of following the believers. These signs shall follow them that believe. Believers always have signs and wonders among them. Jesus said in St. Mark, the 16th chapter, these signs shall follow them to the end of the world. They that believe and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues. 
If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, it will not harm them. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And today, the churches, you preach that doctrine. They take the confirmation as a man that goes to church, a good choir, religious type of man, pays his tithes, is ordered to the church, believes in the church. Brother, that's no sign at all. That's the world sign. But God's sign is what he said it was. And you know, Brother Branham had signs. He had the two the two signs that were given as a witness. The sign in the hand, uh, the sign of discernment, and then you know he talked about how Moses had two signs also, but the third sign was life to the believer and death to the unbeliever. And you know, if you look at Deuteronomy, and I like this, the the word Deuteronomy means two laws. It means if you obey God, you live. If you disobey God, you die. And we can see those two laws all the way from the beginning in Eden. And in a second, if we have time, we'll take it all the way to, to Ephesus, to the Ephesian church age, and see what happened there. But first, let's go back to the Genesis story, verse 6. <coughs> said unto Cain, Why are there wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, let's kind of split this up. If thou, take it a piece at a time, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin life at the door. Now, remember, Cain had seen the fire of God fall on Abel's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He saw it. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like in this day, we've seen the vindicated proof that this is true. We've seen the other believers around us, that their, their testimony is true. Right. And uh, so let's just see what Brother Brandon has to say about this divine healing. Now he that willfully, he that sins, and what is sin? Unbelief. He that will turn his back on truth when it's presented to him, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Did you ever read it like that? He that disbelieves willfully after truth has been present to him because his church believes different. That's when you cross the line. He that sins willfully after he has received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice. That's because you've seen the sacrifice. You've seen it right there in front of him. You turn your back on it and say, I don't, I don't want it. There's no more sacrifice because that is the sacrifice. God's power to transform. He said, why, didn't, why are you looking like that? He said, if you'll do well, Go do like your brother is doing out there. I'll receive you and bless you. I'll do for you the same thing. Think about it. He'll, he'll give you the same Holy Ghost baptism. He'll give you the same leading of the Holy Spirit, the Word in you revealing and signs and wonders following. Nah, that's not in the quote. <laughs> but he just couldn't do it. He said, now if you don't, sin of unbelief lieth at the door. God's power to transform, but you see, Sin life at the door. Now notice what that done to Cain, and it's going to do the same today. It made Cain go away, a willful, willful sinner. He willfully was disobedient. Every person will be the same way, willfully disobedient after he had seen Abel's message so vindicated of God that it was the truth and refused to do it. Done the same thing, and then he crossed the dividing line. Now everybody's got a dividing line because God is such a gentleman that he'll call you and call you, but if you turn it away, he's very polite and he won't override your free will legacy. That's right. <clears throat> and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. I have a question, Lord. How do you then put together with the fact that God is not an Indian giver. How, how, how is there no 
sacrifice Hussein. Because he's not an Indian giver. And Brother Branham gives the example of that preacher who just dives quickly. Yeah, I remember the story of the, uh, I think it was, he said uh, Abraham Lincoln gave the pardon and the man in the prison wouldn't, he turned down the pardon. Mm -hmm. And so That's they right. went ahead and uh, executed him. So if you turn down the pardon, you've rejected the pardon. There's nothing that can be done for you because you've turned it down. And Jesus paid the, paid the sacrifice once for all for us all, but he's not going to force any of us to receive it. Right. Now, the question, a lot of people, when they re are receiving the Holy Ghost, looking to receive it, and I, I've talked to a lot of young people that feel this way, that the devil will tell you, you've sinned away your day of grace. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know if you've sinned away your day of grace? It's very simple. If you don't want to come to Jesus, then you send away your day of grace. Um, I don't know if I, I, I was looking at a quote, and I had that quote in here where Brother Brandon was talking about, a young lady and he said, he told her that, that um, if anybody needs that, I'll, I'll be glad to get it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Now, in the New Testament, we heard how Jesus was telling Peter, Satan desires to sift thee like wheat, but I pray for you. And this is really the same kind of thing. If you, if you will do like your brother, then you'll roll over sin and death and Satan. Because, you know, if you're on God's side, Satan can't do one thing against you without the Lord's permission. <clears throat> In chapter 8, I mean, sorry, verse 8, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, what did Abel say to Cain? Let's turn to John chapter 8. And I, this is probably going to be as far as we get. John chapter 8. Verse 31. Now, I, I just, you know, Jesus was the second Adam that said to correct all of the things that Adam brought into the world. And I just imagine that the conversation must have gone like this because he's talking to, well, let's just read. <laughs> Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? Just like he told to Abel, come do like, or told to Cain, come do like your brother Abel. If you'll believe on my word and do, then you'll uh, be accepted. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And that was always, people are always looking for genealogy to prove by your lineage that you're saved. But we're not saved by Adam's seed. He got us into this mess. We're saved by the seed of the woman, which is Christ. And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the serpent of sin. There's serpent seed right there. Whosoever committed sin is the serpent of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If you were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but the Jews have a history of teaching serpent seed. 
they actually, if you look back at what the early rabbis from uh, uh, 2,000 years ago or whatever, their writings, they taught that there were two Adams, one with a soul and one without a soul. And uh, we don't have time to get all into that, but they, so that's, they're telling them, we, we know about this serpent seed business. We've been not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. And we're at 25 minutes after the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and stop right now. <laughs>